my name is Megan Hempel. I am the owner of Brain, Body, and Beyond, uh, and my specialty is food addiction and weight loss. Awesome. Now, this is your second time back on the show. I think last time we just talked about sugar, right? Yes. We're going to talk about it a little more, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to either just really love us or really hate us on this one because uh, people are pretty opinionated about this topic. Yeah, but I think you and I both, we're, uh, we're, we're both here uh, to, to bring truth, right? So if you like it, you like it. And if not, then uh, shut, shut the episode off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one's forcing anybody to listen to this show. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's just, let's just jump right into it, Megan. Um, let's just talk about food processing versus like hyper-processed, hyper-palatable foods because there's a major difference there. And I think a lot of people just conflate it like, oh, you, you say processed foods, you mean everything. It's like, no, there's there's a big difference, right? Yeah. Oh, totally a big difference. Uh, there's a big difference between a, maybe a packaged food that has three ingredient, ingredients versus uh, a processed food that has uh, 500 different ingredients with words that you can't even pronounce. Yeah, exactly. And like, I've gotten comments on things where I've said like, oh, like stop eating like this processed food all the time. And everyone's like, well, everything's processed to a certain extent, like cooking's processing, like whatever, cutting up vegetables is processing. It's like, yeah, that is very true. But the difference, though, is when you're doing like a hyper processed, hyper palatable food, like say Doritos, like Doritos is drastically different than not that I eat corn, but corn or something. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, and while we're kind of on this topic, um, you know, I think a lot of people in the health and fitness space, maybe not you and I so much, but you'll have a lot of um, people be counting their calories and macros. And uh, you have those people that will say, oh, well, you know, there's no such thing as bad foods. And if it fits your macros, then go for it. And one, not all food is food, as you know. Um, and food is information, right? So it's either healing us or hurting us or causing dysfunction or, you know, it's serving us for a purpose. Um, and you aren't just what you eat, you are what you absorb. So that's why I kind of have a problem with the, um, the counting calories and macros. And if it fits your macros, eat it because like I said, it can either hurt you or heal you. <laughs> no, exactly. And I think like an easy example for that, just like everyone always talks about seed oils and then like, say like, um, like tallow or something. It's like, yeah, the, the fat content might be similar or exactly the same per ounce but how your body interacts with that is drastically different. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's funny when people are like, oh, well, like I met my macros for the day because I, I went to McDonald's and, and ate this or ate that. It's like, well, yeah, technically you did, but the quality there is drastically different and how your body's interpreting like those macros is not the same. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of sad is some people may not even discover or or know what it feels like to actually feel good until they really start simplifying their diet and um saying no to things that aren't potentially um serving them well um i truly believe that simple is better so like when you work with me oh, or i'm giving advice to somebody i say stick stick to eating from the earth right? Um, avoid anything that comes out of a package. Um, now, like we talked about, not every packaged food uh, is created equally. I think there's some some decent products on the market that are uh, great meal replacements or, or substitutes are these things that you should be, you know, using as a meal replacement every single day. Meh, probably not. But like you, you're super active. Right. Um, and I'm sure that you have great grab and goes that serve you, um, but you probably wouldn't eat them as an everyday thing. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And like, this is something I've been thinking a lot about recently because I have obviously a lot of friends in the running community and endurance community. And I, I, I forgot who it was and it wouldn't even be appropriate to name drop them. But we were talking one time just about the amount of calories they have to consume, because it's like when you're running 100 plus miles a week. Like that's a lot of wear and tear on your body. So you do need a lot of calories and a lot of fat and protein and everything. And he was just like, oh, well, like I just got to eat sometimes. So it's like, I'll have my meal, but then I'll have like, say like three or four bagels after, or like a bag of chips, all these things. It's like, yeah, at a certain point, like, yeah, like 
yeah, you need the calories, but at the same time though, like maybe reaching for something that's not just empty calories, like say maybe like double up on your protein shake, like a whey protein shake. Like, yeah, it's a processed food per se, but it's not like a hyper processed, hyper palatable thing. And it's actually going to be beneficial for your body versus just like another bag of Doritos or another bag of like whatever. Yeah. Well, you just said four bagels and and my brain just went, holy cow, talk about inflammation, <laughs> right? So like you're, if you're running a hundred miles a week, you want it, the food that you're giving your body, you, you want that food to help restore and regenerate, right? And not already add to the stress on your body that you're already giving it through putting it through a hundred miles. Right. Um, so, and I think there's some, some great easy ways to do, um, to get a significant amount of calories without eating bagels. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. And like, that's something <laughs> that I've like been trying to focus on recently. Cause like, as I up my, like my biking volume, my running volume and stuff, I'm like, well, how can I just eat more quality foods? Cause sometimes I'll just like, I'll have a steak and I'm like, man, I am stuffed. And it's yeah. so hard to eat more, but at the same time, like I realize that I need more in my body because like, and I've noticed it like, I'll not that I have like a lot of weight to lose, but I'll drop a little bit and I can, I can notice that difference. Yeah. And so as I've started adding in like something like raw milk, for example, with whey protein added to it, I can get like 40, 50 grams of protein very quickly. And it's yeah. not like I have to eat like another, whatever, like pound of steak or something. So yeah. You know what I feel? I I feel like it's a great, uh, actually I just start, I don't eat these personally, but my daughter, I make them for my daughter because it's a significant amount of calories, uh, and quality, quality calories. Um, if find yourself a great quality, uh, protein supplement, like not all protein powders, as you know, are, uh, created equally. A lot of them have, you know, a lot of different additives, um, and believe it or not, heavy metals are being found in a lot of these protein supplements. So I think actually finding a good protein powder that is third-party tested is extremely important. But a quality protein powder, add some eggs in there. Um, and you can even add, I don't know if you do dairy, but you could even add, you know, cream cheese to it, whatever you want, put them in a waffle. I make it like waffles for her. And then I just, she, she puts it, uh, she puts the full fat cream cheese on it or full fat butter. I mean, you could literally put three tablespoons on butter and that's an easy 300 calories right there. Yeah. And those calories are way more beneficial for you than a, a bag of chips. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And like I, thinking of like heavy metals and stuff and these like protein powders, she's like, obviously you go to like, say a new grocery store or like whatever supplement store and there's just tons and tons of protein powders. Um, I don't know if you guys back East have natural grocers or vitamin cottage. It's like, we like, have whole foods. Okay. I guess it's semi similar, but like natural grocers is like just a little smaller, like I guess it's semi local, I guess, but um, they have just like their store brand of whey protein. It's just straight up whey. And it's awesome because there's no fillers, there's no additives, no flavor. And when I mix that with milk, like to me, it tastes kind of sweet, like in a good way. And, yeah. and I love it. Like it's super good. And it's actually really cheap too. But then like considering like heavy metals and stuff, like you may know more about this than me, but like I've, as far as I understand, like when you're concentrating, like say like a pea protein and pulling all the actual protein out of it, you're also like concentrating the heavy metals, which are more likely to accumulate in a vegetable versus like an animal. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, I thought maybe you'd know a little bit more about that. But no. That's all I know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not an expert on that by any means. But I'm not an expert on it either, but I do know that heavy metals um, can, a lot of a lot of time are found in protein powder. So that's why I'm just like, I I personally like getting my my protein uh, from, from meat. Um, but like I said, there is a time and a place for supplements and meal replacements, especially when you are like you, like, like an athlete like you and you, okay, you legitimately need these calories. I work with a lot of people who, uh, overeat. Um, but I do have clients who struggle with under eating. And as you know, uh, under eating can, can really work against you. Um, and the quality of your calories matter. Yeah. Can we talk about under eating from like a, like a hormonal or just even performance perspective? Because I think a lot of athletes just aren't eating enough or even a lot of people in general, obviously like there's both sides of the coin here, but right. it seems like a lot of people get kind of obsessed. Like, Oh, if I eat too much, then I'm going to gain weight or whatever. But at a certain point, like it's like, you need to eat more. Otherwise your body's not working properly. Then you will just gain weight. Right. 
Yeah. So like your basal metabolic rate, right? If you are starving your body and you're under eating, the calories and the energy that you give it, your body's going to want to hold on to that because it's, it's hungry, right? And it's not getting what it needs to function optimally. Um, so believe it or not, somebody who is under eating and they up their calorie intake a lot of the time they actually start losing uh, because their body's not hanging on to the calories that it's getting for dear life. Yeah, no, that is really interesting. I think a lot of people just kind of assume like it's calories in, calories out. Like if you want to lose weight, you need to just like, like basically just lower your calorie um, intake every day or whatever. And it's like, it doesn't really make any sense because like a human body isn't just a machine. It's not just like a, an engine in a car. Like there's so many differences and nuances here. And it's very complex. Whereas like a car engine, yeah, it is complicated, but it's also very simple as far as like fuel and whatever out of it. Yeah. And I think too, like it's so hard to determine what everybody's body actually needs because everybody runs differently, not just from like a performance standpoint, but like, what is your body doing hormonally? What's going on in your gut? all of that. So like, there's really, there's really no one size fits all as you know. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. And that's something that I've also thought a lot about recently. I guess I've been thinking a lot about (laughs) this stuff recently, everything we're talking about, but it's like, it's interesting. Like you'll get on, like, say a lot of people like want to do keto to restart the year or something, or they want to like do these like diets and things. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But it's like there's nuance there. And it's like if you're super active, like if you're cutting your carbs down to 20 grams a day or going pure carnivore and you're, say, an endurance athlete, you may or may not have some issues there. Whereas someone who's completely sedentary, that could be the appropriate diet for them just to kind of reset their body and then kind of start introducing foods again, right? Yep, absolutely. And and, and this is where, like, I think, you know, I think uh, the health and fitness space can be so dogmatic, uh, especially in the ketogenic carnivore carnivore world. Um, and I always tell my clients to stop watching what everybody else is doing, because just because something may be working for them doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. Um, you have so many people talking about like, you know, you need carbs to thrive or, you know, d- different things. So like, you have got to be your biggest experiment. And if you are sticking with, whether you're on the more paleo side of things or the more low carb ketogenic carnivore, if you are sticking with foods that come from the earth and not, and staying away from foods that are in a package, you're doing better than everybody. Yeah, definitely. And like, I would 100% agree with that. They're like just sticking, like you were saying earlier. And now it's like, like most people, if they just ate real food, like their health would improve like ex- exponentially. And like, there are definitely like instances where somebody has like say an autoimmune disorder or some sort of chronic or genetic issue. But for the most part, like if people just ate, like they say a, a quote unquote balanced diet of like real food, they wouldn't have all these chronic health conditions that are basically only prevalent, like as we've introduced like a quote unquote Western diet, right? Yep. And, and not here to like, you know, talk shit. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> But there's so many influencers in the space, quote unquote professionals, who will say, you know, there's no such thing as bad foods. Okay, let's be real. Not all food is is food. It's not. It's not at all. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And it was interesting because right around New Year's, I released a video just talking about that and like, like I, I can name three or four people at the top of my head right now that like advocate for eating junk food, essentially, like go out for a run. And before you go run, eat a pop tart because it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's like, OK, well, like, yeah, technically, maybe like you have some macros there, like you have like some carbs and protein and fat, like very minimal and like it's not going to be absorbed properly. But then it's like I had all these people comments like, oh, no one's suggesting that no RD or sports nutritionist is suggesting that I'm like, people are literally advocating for that. And like what I think is like it comes down to them being addicted to these types of foods because Instead of having a Pop-Tart before a run, you could have a banana, you could have a couple eggs, you could have even like a protein shake would be way more beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. But instead these people, and like I'm kind of, I don't know, hypothesizing if that's even a word here, 
that these people are just addicted to these foods. So they want to almost like justify their addiction by saying like, oh, just go eat a bag of candy because like a calorie is a calorie, like a carb is a carb, like a Swedish fish is the same as a banana or a, an orange or something, where in reality, they're not because your body's going to handle them differently. A hundred percent. And I always like to, and I, I think I said this in the beginning, but well, one, I think, you know, especially for athletes, right? People who are legitimately like burning insane amount of calories, it's, you know, they, they can justify it, right? Because, oh, you know, well, I'm, I'm working it off. Okay. But really, is it, is it fueling your body the way that it actually needs to? Um, and I think too, oh, you just said something that really stuck out to me and I just lost my train of thought, but, um, if you want to genuinely feel your best, right, you want to recover, you want to perform optimally, then you would probably think that you want to be giving your, your body micronutrient dense foods and not just energy, not just trash, not to mention, um, a lot of these processed foods like pop tart pop tarts anything really that is made from general mills or pepsico or any of those everything that's funded by big food literally are engineered to be addictive literally and a lot of people will say okay well you know not eating those things is restrictive and i disagree with that Choosing to not eat those things is a form of self-respect because I want to live my best life and not feel like crap or poison my body with a chemical storm. Yeah, definitely. That's that's one hundred percent how I think about it. And I was talking to a friend about this the other day. We were at a race and we ran a lot of a lot of laps in time together. But um, we were just talking about that. How like it, a lot of people are like, oh, you have an eating disorder because you're you're excluding like a this food group. And I'm like. How is junk it's not food a, food, a group. food group? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's not even food. Like it's it's kind of like lab made. Just it's a food type product at best. Mm -hmm. And like yeah, it might have some of these macros in it or some like remnants of a food, but in reality, it's it's not food. And like your body needs food. So then it's like we we're talking about how like we become semi like well not semi but just like addicted to, to feeling good. It's like once you start eating real food and like nourishing mm -hmm. your body properly you feel good. So it's like, why would you want to like go back to something that you knew was hurting you in the past and causing issues when you can just feel like top notch all the time? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and that's what I, I mean by like, it's like people don't, a lot of people will never, you know, even understand or know what it feels like to feel really, really, really good. And for those of us who actually experiment and take the time to uh, eliminate certain things, we start to figure out what's working for us, what's not working for us, uh, and like how to feel our best. So like, I'll give you an example of that for me. So I have uh, been in like the, the ketogenic, I don't like even like using the word ketogenic because people are like, oh my God, ketogenic. Like I just, I don't even like to say that. Um, but I more, I've, I've been in the low carb ketogenic space for close to five years now. And I do my best there. And I'll go through phases where I'm ketogenic, lower carb. So like ketogenic, for those of you who don't know, ketogenic is like 20, about 20 carbs or below. Anything that's 150 grams of carbs below is technically low carb. Uh, for me, uh, like a higher carb day for me is like probably between 60 and to 100 carbs. Um, and then I'll go through periods where I'm strict carnivore. Um, and believe it or not, I feel my best when I'm 100% carnivore. Now, are all my clients carnivore? No. Do I think carnivore should be for everybody? Well, not if you don't want it to be. Um, but that's where I do my best. And I know that's where I do my best because I've experimented. And I encourage everybody to just kind of look at themselves as like this one big experiment. See what's working for you. See what's not working for you. Be willing to actually give some stuff up for a certain amount of time to see that if it, see if it helps your mental or physical health. Um, but you don't discover anything without trying. Yeah, exactly. And I think with health in general, it's like you're saying, like the experimenting with things is like one, it's fun. Like it's fun to like 
either eliminate things and like challenge yourself or just to try new foods even too like yeah i don't know say you're going carnivore and you've never had lamb before like go get a lamb steak like it's delicious or try some yes try some elk or something and i love how you said challenge right because like for me i i love challenging myself i love um you get reward out of the challenge right so and and i know that you're the same um but yeah, like you can, you can make any challenge fun. Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's always, it's, I don't, not that I love cooking or anything by any means, but it is fun to just like try different things. It's like, oh, I've never done this before. Like, even if it's just like using an air fryer or you bake yeah. or something, you've never Do you have an air, do you, do you, do you, cause you do van life, right? Half the time. Yeah. Okay. Do you have an air fryer? Uh, I do at home. Like I don't uh-huh. ever use it though, and I just never got into the habit. And are you always, kidding you me? Use it. And it's, I just oh bake my stuff. god, <laughs> dude! The air fryer is literally my freaking best. And this is like when people tell me that they don't have time to cook, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Buy an air fryer, and it'll change your life. <laughs> I believe you. I should just like maybe I'll make a challenge for myself to use it once a week, and then I'll probably just become addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, and let me know when you do. All right, I'll make a post about it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, it was interesting, like last week, um, just speaking of like the nuance and stuff and like how we're all different, like I did um, a show with John from Keto Road. Um, I think he's in the back east as well. And we were just talking, like he's been running some like ultras and some marathons and stuff and he's, he's a coach. And he, we were talking about that, how like sir, everyone's different to a certain extent. Like we all have a lot of like, there's a lot of crossover, but then there's yeah. also differences between every person. And a lot of that comes down to like what you're doing with your life. Like if you're running a marathon or you're marathon training or you're a sprinter, for example, like you need like fast action carbs, like immediately. But if you're just like, I don't know, going to the office every day, like walking to and from your car, like you don't need to be cramming down the carbs. So maybe like a zero carb or low carb diet is more appropriate. It kind of depends on like what our goals are in life. And there's also like, there's trade-offs for everything. Like if you want to excel at running really fast, really short amount of time, you might suffer in your health long term if you're just crushing like sugars and carbs all day. I think that's something we all need to talk about because like for me specifically, like I don't think that's what I want to do with my life. But if somebody wants to do that, it's like I have more power to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And I think your diet will change throughout like, 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 okay, like maybe there's going to be a period where I get into running and, and I'm going on these lengthy runs. Okay. So that probably means I need to up my carbs a little bit, right? Like your body may have different demands throughout the course of your life where you need to switch things up in your diet. Right. Um, however, one thing that will never change for me is I will always stick to eating real food that nourishes me. I mean, I think too, like once you educate yourself more about what certain foods actually do to your body, especially the the foods that aren't even foods, you don't want them. Like, I don't look at my lifestyle. I think a lot of people may look at my lifestyle and be like, oh my gosh, she's so restrictive. But for me, being sick, feeling like being a slave to food, that is restrictive. I don't want any of that in my life. Eating a real foods diet is one, I feel my best. My mental health is the best. Uh, physically, I, I look my best. Um, and I, I'm in control of my life. And food is just, I look at food as nourishment. It's not like, it's not really about, it's not a mouth party anymore for me. It's like, okay, yeah, I need to eat to survive. And I want to eat the foods that are, are going to make me thrive. Exactly. Look at it the same way too. Like that, that being said though, I do love like like a good steak. It just tastes so good. And I crave that sort of thing. But in the end though, it's like, it's, it's almost like a means to an end. I don't want that to sound negative at all because like the way I eat it, like it allows me to do what I like to do. I can put in high bike volume, high running volume and not feel like garbage all the time. Whereas like if I were just eating, like say I'd go to McDonald's after a run and then get a milkshake and then just eat sugar Mm -hmm. at night and wake up and have like fruity pebbles with skim milk or whatever for breakfast. Like I'm going to feel like garbage and then I can't do the things that I enjoy. So like, just to reiterate what you're saying, it's like eating properly and being like disciplined really is an avenue to freedom. Like there's nothing restrictive about it. So you're cutting out the crap so you can accomplish your goals and feel good about yourself. So like, I don't see how that's a negative thing, like in the slightest personally. No, I agree. It's just our culture, right? It's Mm -hmm. quote unquote, so normal 
to eat all of these things, but it's not normal for our DNA to be taking in. Like our bodies don't want any of that. And I also like to focus on with my clients and myself. It's like, how do I want to feel? And also, how do I want my future to look, right? I, I Like, you know, when I get older, like my, cho- I know today, like the choices that I make today are going to determine where my health is going to be, you know, when I'm 40, 50, 60 years old. I mean, disease can start in your 30s, um, especially Alzheimer's, believe it or not, uh, which uh, is also, you know, type 3 diabetes, is being known as type 3 diabetes today. Um, and I don't want any of that. So like I'm working on my 40, 50, 60 year old body and I want to be hot until I'm dead. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Like whether it's out of pure vanity or you just want to feel good. It's like, there's yeah, nothing wrong with both. that. Both. <laughs> 100% both. <laughs> no, I agree. So that brings me, brings us back to kind of like the original question. And like, when is there a time and a place for like processed foods? Like if ever. Uh, when the zombie apocalypse hits and (laughs) you've got to do whatever it is you got to do to survive. But like, I mean, even the zombie apocalypse, I have my pantry stored with like canned fish and like dehydrated meat. So I don't ever have to touch that. (laughs) I think that's super smart. Like I actually have like my, my food storage as well. Cause like, who knows like (laughs) what's going to happen. And it's stuff like that. It's not just like, like everyone just has like beans and rice or oatmeal. Yeah. Like, yeah, those are literally survival foods, like last resort. But if you could stock it up with like real, like real food, then you're going to be like exponentially stronger than all the people starving to death. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be process. smart. You're going to be smarter. You're going to be sharper. You're going to be quicker. Um, yeah. I don't really, <laughs> there isn't a time and a place for processed foods, <laughs> but, but um, like, okay. But some, some processed foods, like, you know, for instance, I'm sure you know Keto Brick, right? Yeah. Um, they're great quality product. That product is technically processed, but there's like four ingredients in it, right? It's like protein, uh, good quality protein. Um, I don't know what else he adds in there. Salt, um, and coconut oil, like really good ingredients, like four ingredients, right? Um, there's another great processed uh, carnivore bar. What is the carnivore bar made out of? Beef, tallow, and salt. Also real food, you know? Um, Yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention those things because like specifically carnivore bar and like steadfast provisions, they make it's pemmican, which is, yeah, it's food process and you are processing the food, but it's still using those (laughs) real ingredients. And that's so much different than like maybe getting whatever a pop tart a pop tart yeah <laughs> or a, bagel. Like, what, a bagel a bagel with yeah. peanut butter with canola oil in it or something or yeah which is disgusting but i guess like <laughs> as far as like performance goes like i definitely limit my processed foods and like hyper processed foods anyways in like everyday life but i think like if you're out say you're gonna run like a 50 mile or 100 miler it's like almost impossible to like get enough fuel in if you're just eating like bananas or like fruit or something because there's so much like it sounds weird but like mouth fatigue is a real thing and yeah if you're out there it's like it's so hard to eat all these things especially all the fiber and stuff which yeah well <laughs> that keto keto brick a whole brick is a, a thousand calories so i mean i yeah. think that's pretty that's pretty good yeah they're super dense like i've used those before on like long trips and stuff like bike packing and like long runs like really long runs like multi-day things and like they're awesome because like they always taste good and you can just kind of wrap them up and put them away. And like, that's way obviously better than just like, I don't know, cane sugar or something. Or four bagels. Or four bagels or a loaf <laughs> of bread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there's always a little bit of nuance, but um, like when I was talking with John, um, yes, or last week we were from Keto Road, we were talking about that, how like, it's like, yeah, make the, your diet, the bulk of it should, like it's 99%, if not more, should just be real food, like you're saying. Yeah. Because your body needs that real food. And there are those like, maybe certain circumstances where you'll take like something like hyper processed or processed, but that shouldn't be like an everyday thing by any means because your, right. your health is going to suffer from it. Yeah. And if you are somebody who like, you know, wants a bagel, cool. You could make yourself a bagel with better ingredients. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Actually something that I really want to like, um, I want to find an expert on that to talk about like these things that are sourdough like, and stuff. Oh, sourdough is so good. (laughs) I rarely eat it, but it's delicious. But even more so than that, just like these things that are like in our food products, like not that I drink it, but like Mountain Dew, 
as like yellow number five in sodium benzoate. The food the dyes, they're killing us. Yeah, and like they're banned in Europe, but they're still eaten here. And I think it's funny that people are like, oh, it doesn't cause any problems where there's plenty of data suggesting that those things are very harmful to our health. And there's reasons why they're banned in almost every country in the world, minus here for some reason. Like yeah, and our children's health. And uh, like my kiddo the other day, she she's not obviously like, she's not where I'm at yet. I'm just trying to teach her all of the things. Because you have to be very careful. Like I don't want to create any eating disorders with my children. Um, but I do, I really want to educate her, right? So she can make good health conscious decisions but, you know, I tell her about the food dyes and she she picked up, I think they're probably one of the literally the worst things that you can eat. But they're like the, these like um, nerd gummy things. And I was like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, why don't you pick up that package and you read the back of the ingredients? And she just started naming all of these food dyes. And I was like, yep, those are all carcinogens. They contribute to a lot of mental health issues. They're trash. They're trash. And we're giving our kids them. Yeah. And that's yeah. always like blown my mind that like these things that are heavily linked to these disorders. So like, yeah, we're going to like put them in like school lunches or like, mm -hmm. like in the vending machines at school. Like when I was in middle school, we had like Jolt Cola, like this hyper caffeinated cola drink and all these other things. It's like in surge. It's like a Mountain Dew type drink. I was like in the vending machines at school and I'm like sixth, seventh grade just eating this stuff. Like, oh, well, it's at school. Like what's wrong with it? And then yeah. Like, school pizza and all this crap. It's like, why like there's obviously like direct correlation with like the junk we're feeding our kids and putting them in a natural environment and then like oh now we gotta get the medication it's like yeah it's just like a giant feedback loop. so i just got done another food addiction course um and in the course it stated um that i think i think it said by 2050 if we continue to eat the way that we're eating and moving at the rate that we're moving at one in three people will have diabetes by 2050. One in three. Well, that's wild. And that's why I say your your food choices are either healing you or they're hurting you. And it's true. Yeah, totally true. And like from like a like an endurance sports perspective, I've seen these people that would like for years would advocate like, oh, I just eat junk and I love Swedish fish and Sour Patch Kids and blah, blah, blah. And like that works for a couple of years, but then suddenly it's like their bodies are falling apart and it's almost like they have to post like a, I don't know, like a, a shameful post or like something like, Hey, like I advocated for this and I was wrong. And yeah. it's interesting to see them clean up their diet and how their body can heal. But it's like, you can avoid that whole, like that long misery section of your life and just like totally skip it and just be healthy all the time. Like, and it's awesome. Yeah. And you can, you can look super fit. You could be super shredded. You could be super lean. And just because you look healthy doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthy. Yeah. And that's like this weird thing within like running, for example, it's like, oh, well, like they're super thin, so they must be healthy. But it's like, that's not, not the case a lot of times. Like, like, yeah, you may be fast in the moment, but like your body could be dying inside, even if you look okay. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's interesting, but just real quick though, like what are your thoughts on things like, like we talked about this the other week, but like using like say like a quest bar as like a tool or like diet Coke as a tool to like get off sugar without making those like a staple in your diet. Yeah. So I think there's a time and a place, um, like, and, and it, and honestly, I think it also is extremely individ individualized for everybody. Um, because like for a lot of my clientele, um, I think the quest bars, um, they could be a tool, but they could also be sabotaging because they still have a lot of the artificial sweeteners in them. They're super sweet. So it's like, okay, you could be taking one bad habit, but also then bringing it into another bad habit with, you know, constantly overeating the quest bars to make up for the Snickers bar that they're not eating. Is it a better option? Yes, 100%. So that could be a way to bridge a gap. Um, but also if you're somebody like, like you and your endurance space, uh, and you're not struggling with food addiction or sugar addiction, I think that, uh, that's a much better alternative to, you know, a pop tart, you know, um, and then the Diet Coke, um, I think Diet Coke is trash. Um, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a carcinogen. 
Um, yes, it doesn't necessarily have calories in it, but I think it's sending signals to your body that uh, can be disruptive. Uh, an so an alternative to a Diet Coke, um, have you ever heard of Zevia's? Yeah. I have. I don't like it. I think that would be I think that would be a much better alternative than like a, a diet soda. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. I use get rid of the junk. Maybe having like stevia and some flavoring and water basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, like they're not my favorite, but I also just I don't know, a lot of those like artificial sweetener it, type things I don't really like. Yeah. <laughs> or non nutritive sweeteners, I should say. Yeah, and when you don't have any sweets for a long time and you have something sweet, you're like, holy cow. This yeah. Is really sweet. <laughs> yeah, the other day I like I got some like raspberries or something and I was just like holy cow like they were so sweet and it was it was wild to me they tasted super good but it was like right. they smelled just like crushed that entire container not that it's that much but now I'm just like, right oh, I'm just like, <laughs> tone this back like they were bit. like candy to you <laughs> yeah it was like so much like like back in the day I could like crush a bag of candy and now it's like sometimes hard to like crush an entire like little thing of berries or something not always but sometimes that's good though yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Megan. I know you got you got to get going. You got stuff, some stuff going on, but um, it's fun to chat with you. Yeah, it was so great chatting with you. It's always good. Yeah, and uh, just real quick, where can people find you again? Like, what's your um your handles and stuff? Yep, uh, I'm most active on my Instagram account, Megan dot Alice M E G H A N N dot Alice. Shoot me a message, and I'm always willing to chat. Cool. Sounds good. Well, thanks for your time. We'll talk soon. Have a great day.